Welcome to the sixth episode of Zack the Ripper the Suspects. So in this episode we will be focusing on the life of Thomas Hain Cutbush. If you're liking these episodes, please give them a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thomas Hain Cutbush was born on the 29th of June 1866 in Kennington, London, to his mother Kit and his father Thomas. Thomas Cutbush's father stayed around until he was approximately two years old and then he moved to New Zealand to start his life again and remarried. After Thomas's father left the household, his mother, Kate, took him to live with her aunt Clara at 14 Albert Street in Kennington. His mother did not remarry and he stayed the only child, but he was doted on by his spinster aunt and his mother. As Cutbush grew older, he found it very difficult to stay in a job, for now which people would class it as a mental health problem. He lost his first job very, very quickly due to his behavioural problems. When he eventually found his next job, for some unknown reason, he pushed his employer down a flight of stairs, which injured him pretty badly. Not having the motivation to find himself another job, Thomas Cutbush spent his days reading medical books and was also convinced that someone was trying to poison him. This did not help his state of mind and he would glare at other people. It is claimed that when night fell over London, he would walk the streets of Whitechapel and maybe get some female attention by the local unfortunates, which we would now call them prostitutes. By 1888, when the Ripper killings came to life, Thomas Cook Bush's behaviour worsened. He became aggressive, which led him to being locked up in Lambeth Asylum for four days. During this time, it stated that Cutbush may have contracted syphilis from the local prostitutes. It seems that Thomas Cutbush had been in and out of workhouses for much of his adult life. In the year 1891, Thomas Cutbush was convicted of stabbing two separate women on two different occasions. Each time he attacked the women in public, stabbing them both in the buttocks. His victims were Florence Johnson and Isabella Anderson. They both lived in Kennington. Cutbush was found guilty of these crimes by the medical board who diagnosed Thomas Cutbush as a psychotic with dangerous tendencies. Cutbush was sentenced confinement until he showed sign of mental improvement and was taken to Broadmoor Hospital. Of course Thomas Cutbush did not improve and he remained there until he died on the 5th of July 1903 at the age of 37. The Sun newspaper declared Thomas Cutbush as Jack the Ripper. This was declared in February of 1894. Why was he a Jack the Ripper suspect? Number one, he was violent towards women and his temper seemed to get worse over time. Number two, it seemed that Thomas Cutbush did not have a stable life and spent a lot of time in workhouses and asylums. Number three, each attack on his victims, he stabbed them from behind and did not attempt to conceal the attacks. Why he was not Jack the Ripper? Number one, Sir Melvin McNaughton claimed that Thomas Cutbush was not a suspect. Number two, the suspicion was outed by a newspaper and no one with any relevance to the case. Number three, according to eyewitnesses, the last men which were seen with the Ripper victims while they were alive seemed a lot older than the 23 years that Thomas Cutbush was. In conclusion, do I think Thomas Cutbush was Jack the Ripper. I think it would be impossible for a serial killer who mutilated his victims to stop for a two year period before attacking women again, but this time it was only solely wounding them in public places. In the attack against Florence and Isabella, he did not try to conceal where he attacked them and he admitted to his crimes. No, I do not think he is Jack the Ripper. Please subscribe to my channel and give me a big thumbs up. If you're interested in the case of Jack Ripper, 
Please buy my book on Amazon in the footsteps of Jack the Ripper and his victims.